Microsoft, and uh, I'm presently working with SAP. I'm an area product owner for a bunch of topics, uh, mostly in the UI area. So the, the official umbrella of the topics is uh, UI um, second, evolution and integration. And the evolution business deals with uh, more classical technologies like uh, working for ABAP, unified rendering, and floor plan manager. While the integration deals with uh, things like MWBC, uh, the <coughs> page builder that we saw recently, and uh, there's one new topic called UI integration services. And most of these things, except for the classical uh, technologies, uh, ended up uh, being shipped with an add-on. This is the UI add-on from NetWeaver, uh, which comes apart from uh, this UI integration services and then the WC. It also comes with uh, the development kit for HTML5, which you also know as SAP UI5. So the idea is that once you install your add-on, you will be fully enabled to uh, create high fidelity, uh, innovative user experience on top of your add-on backend. Yeah? And uh, one of the value propositions of this add-on is that it's released uh, quarterly. So you know the rate of innovation that will reach the adopters uh, should be quite high. And uh, there's uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on the on on the add-on itself, marketing it. I'll rather show you stuff. Uh, but I just want to bring your attention to a blog by a colleague of mine, Filip Misowski. He published this blog on it again. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. So he talks about the add-on. Yeah? So he talks about uh, the development kit for HTML5, which I'm going to call uh, a 5 because that's how we know it. He talks about the NWC 4.0 as an integration shell. For those of you that don't know, but you saw that actually your NWC homepage looks much better than mine. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, it's uh, it's 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 it allows uh, it's a shell that allows uh, you your end users to have a role-based access, basically content, and regardless of the content. This is what NWC is. Uh, it's a shell that renders content, yeah? whether it's Subway, whether it's Web Info, whether it's UI5. Uh, it could be actually any web page. As a matter of fact, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it, there's also this UI services. Now, the UI services is something new, uh, something that you haven't heard of. Uh, and uh, how should I say, it's not, uh, there's not too much substance in it at this point in time. But I think uh, the value proposition behind it is quite high. So that's what I, work, that's what I want to demonstrate to you today. You know, how you can combine these three in order to achieve some cool stuff. And the coolness uh, and the value proposition are in the area of UI integration. Yeah? So basically, do you really have to throw out your existing investments if you want to go towards UI5? Maybe not. Maybe you want to actually bridge the two. Maybe you want to renovate solely yeah, by expanding scenarios and utilizing what you have so far. Uh, but it also goes towards the direction of adding enterprise qualities to your UI5 application. Because UI5 today, it's not UI5, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a library, right? It's a control library that allows you to easily consume content from Gateway. But what about things like globalization? What about like things like security? What about like things like personalization, configuration, some persistency of some of your UI settings? Yeah, this stuff are not there. You have to look for them somewhere else, uh, including navigation. Yeah, uh, and navigation between targets. You know how conversant it is. Those of you who know OVM, for example. Yeah, this this are that's not an easy problem to solve. So with the UI services, and in particular with the navigation service that's there. We try to bridge this gap. Eh? We try to help you easily navigate between uh, uh, SAP content implemented from different stack with different technologies on one hand side, and also uh, to integrate. And by integrating, you can actually start adding your UI5 uh, screens on top of your existing, let's say, classical web browser screens. Just, just an example. So that's what I'm going to try to show you today. Yeah? How we can do this. And this is block is the beginning, yeah? so we're going to be adding content here to this block. Does this make sense, Serge? Makes sense. And, uh, just a question. How much does it cost? You, the other is free. Uh, did I mention the other is free? It's free. <laughs> <laughs> no? 
No, but this <laughs> You mean no extra cost? No extra cost. No extra cost. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's release independent in a way that you can go to your to the 7 output. It's not fully release independent, but let's say it's release independent as, as a 7 output. So if you have 7 output going higher, just install the add on and you get these things. And every three months, you ship another add on. You just have to make sure that you install it on top of it. And you're going to get, let's say, the latest increases from uh, Snap UA5, the latest version of your shell, yeah, and of course, uh, more services there yeah, that can help you combine and mix and up enterprise qualities. And innovate ultimately, yeah, I think this is uh, the buzzword that we want to hear. I missed HANA somewhere, but okay, hopefully I'll be forbidden. <laughs> you can use it with HANA. <laughs> Check mark. Thank you. So, let's say uh, it's going to be a simple example that we're going to look into. Yeah. So, let's say that your task is to provide a high fidelity uh, search application to your end users. Yeah. And your target is the casual usage. So it has to be something lean, something cool, and you know, looks like a pretty good, uh, um, uh, how should say, uh, show uh, proof point for HTML5. And of course you have the add-on, let's not forget, we just downloaded it somehow from the solution manager and we managed to install it. I don't want to know how you guys do that, but apparently it should not be so painful as uh, some of the rumors are. Um, and you have the latest uh, development kit from HTML5, uh, from SAP, and you use Eclipse of course, and you create your application. Yeah. Um, I don't want to upload my data. Uh, the good news is that this tool, uh, that uh, the Eclipse tool, allows you to uh, share your project with your other backend. So basically, you can uh, create your project in Eclipse and upload it into the app or the other way around. Mm -hmm. You can create it in Ava and get it here. And you do this through this Team Share feature. Yeah? You don't, you cannot see it right now because I've just created it, so mm -hmm. it's missing here. But you, you're gonna, when, you know, when you create your project, you're gonna have an option to share with uh, with Ava. And once you do so. Uh, the application will be stored in a, in a BSP application. I want to just make this uh, a clear differentiation bit, bit, that uh, we're not creating a BSP application per se, yeah? we're just storing the UM5 application in a BSP app repository. Yeah? Um, and from here, you can of course test it, you can expose it, and make sure that you, you set up your ICF mode correctly and activate them, and so on. So this way, our app users get them. Yeah? And, um, the application is quite straightforward. I have an index page yeah, that uh, <coughs> uses a view. This view also is my controller. And in this view, I don't do that many great things, except that I call a service. Yeah? Now, this could be your enterprise search. It could be wrapped around your enterprise search. I don't want to exclude the, the fact that it's an enterprise search. Our goal again is to, recall, uh, is to create a casual search application for the end user, yeah? So some simple way of, uh, of allowing people to search across ICP business data, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it could be based on enterprise search, but you could as well, you know, utilize some existing business uh, uh, objects from SAP and create uh, a simple REST service, yeah? As I have done in this example, yeah? And in this REST service, let's not forget that UA5 could use very well, uh, uh, works very well with all data, but doesn't have to be all data. So this is just a raw REST that I'm using here. Uh, and I'm building uh, uh, a table, yeah? Ivan showed you how easy it is, right, to do the binding. Uh, so it's very similar to this. I call the service, right? I create my model, yeah? Just for completeness. And then I start adding my columns, right? And the columns are based on the model. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have, um, you're gonna end up with this screen here, right? It's a, it's a very lightweight application that searches across products coming from this uh, enterprise procurement model app that's available standard in any network <coughs> system. And some, somewhere the UMTS PDA should be available here. Somewhere, the, exactly. Your, 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 the famous UMTS. But, um, yeah, so <coughs> if I probably search down. Do you remember the product ID? No. I don't remember it either, but it's somewhere here. Yeah. It's the same app, yeah? Um, so it's simple to use, right? I put HT, a search term, it searches, right? If I want to refine it, it searches again. 
I mean, it's nothing uh, too sophisticated, but it's a quick search. Now, you're done with development. You might think, okay, you know what, I use part of this album, I use the Eclipse tools, much easy, you know, I deploy it in my ABAP repository. Yes, and now I can take advantage of the security aspects of ABAP, yeah? And, of course, now my challenge is how do I deliver it to my users, yeah? So, you have two aspects that you probably have to consider. One is the pure logistic aspect, yeah? So, namely, how do I get the content to the end user, yeah? So that they can start consuming it, that they know about it, yeah? And then probably a possible answer to this question is, why don't you use something like PSEG? Yeah. And then if you have this shell and the BBC shell that we saw earlier, yeah, then you're going to get it automatically. And if you just add another node to your PSEG tree, of type web application that points to the to this business, uh, to this BSP app that sits uh, in the back end, right? You should be able to get it to your users yeah, for your shell, for your role-based access uh, shell. Yeah. Whether it's portal, whether it's MWC, you can get it. But the second aspect, which is more interesting, is the product experience aspect, yeah, from an end user point of view. How does he expect to get an application? Yeah? So if, he's, if you're talking about a quick search app, is it, is it the most optimal way that I have it somewhere in my uh, user menu that I drill down, I open it just to do a quick search? Yeah? It's a bit counterproductive. Yeah? So if you're talking to the Y generation, and the category users are probably the generation Y type of users, these are users that are very much used to working with web browsers. Yeah? The web browser is their starting point. Yeah? This is their life revolves around it for their iPhone. Uh, and there, they do searches slightly differently. Yeah? How do they do searches? Well, they come in here, let's open a Chrome. I like Chrome better. It's uh, the most popular browser. I go with the trend, of course. And if I do my search here, right, uh, it's interesting that it has some sort of suggestions that appear. But if I just hit HG, which is uh, you know, what I just did uh, as a quick search, you're going to get the, uh, your search results yeah, in a page. And what's interesting is that, um, I don't know if they have it here, they have like search suggestions, yeah, they have also search suggestions. Yeah? So actually, if you look at what sits behind uh, uh, the search uh, capability of your browser, you will find it here in the search, and you have many search engines. So you have some default search engines, you have other search engines. What's interesting is that Many of these will follow a specification called Open Search. Yeah, so um, it's a well-known standard for uh, delivering, uh, for how should I say, for enabling search providers to be consumed. Yeah, and there are probably two things that you're going to need in every, every Open Search. This is the suggestion, so a list of suggestions, and a dedicated search page. Yeah, so if I go back to my Google screen, yeah, this is what you're going to see. Right? Sorry, where was my Google screen? Yeah. The, the, suggestions and the search results, right? Uh, and this is what the generation Y expects, yeah? And now we have two problems to solve, yeah? The, ac the access to the content and the product experience. And here the MWC 4.0 comes into the picture because it's a brand new product which is heavily influenced by the modern browser experience and it of course can, it, it can, of course can consume open search providers. Yeah? So if I now open it, um, it probably does, and they probably have it configured somewhere. I have to, I have to do, I have to do lots of so, I don't have proper, um, I don't have proper um, trust relationship between the system setup. So I'm using development systems today. Yeah. And this is, let's say, an equivalent to an address bar. Called quick launch and search. Yeah, it's like it's it has a central space. It takes central space in space in your NWC frame, and it does what uh, would you expect it, you know, to do, uh, namely to quickly launch applications or to search across various search providers. And some of the search providers are built in. So this is, for example, it searches in your ABAP backend, or it could search in your desktop, but it could also search in some external search providers like this Wikipedia, which is like an open search provider yeah, that I just added. So anyone can do that. So now, if we can enable our application to act in this way, I can add it here, and then I can get it to work the way you know people expect the search provider to work. Yeah, namely available for the browser. I put in my product, I do an enter, and they get my results. Yeah, namely quick search, right? For casual usage, for people that don't want to think, where is my search for my products? You know, how do I do the search? I just do it the way I'm used to do it. Yeah, and that's uh, easier said. Than done, but 
doing it is also not that difficult because my UI5 application already ex it works with the REST service and chances are this REST service, REST service uh, output something in an autumn feed, as an autumn feed, and open search relies on autumn feed, so it's very easy to change my REST service, actually you don't have to change it much, eh? to tweak it up a bit so that it behaves like a search provider. Yeah? So if I look at the very same, um, at the very same, um, let's say, uh, um, uh, service that I used in my UI5 application, And if I go and look for it in ICF, here it is, yeah, it's the same one here. Uh, and if I tested it, yeah, you see that actually the de default test <laughs> produces uh, uh, an open search like uh, like model, like 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 a declaration that tells two things about this open search provider. Namely, it has a, a suggestion URL yeah, here, and it has a dedicated search page URL. Right? So any search, open search consumer can utilize this yeah, for the suggestion box and when you and when you do the search and you hit enter to take it to the search page. Yeah? And actually the output is very simple. I have, I have taken the liberty of, uh, of extracting it and preloading it just to save some time. So this is the search suggestion. You see I have, it's a, it's a feed, it's an atom feed. I have items with images, with text, with descriptions and with URLs yeah, that take me to the details of this item. And here you can see this product list. Yeah? that you just, you know, you can see here, yeah? But, of course, suggestions is not based on search criteria, but it's uh, more freely interpreted, and that's why, that's why um, uh, the search provider also helps you to fine-tune the results. So if I copy this link here, and if I substitute the query term with HT, uh, I would actually get this, yeah? So this is... This is the, so I'm using the UI5 page that I just created for my search provider. I didn't have to do much, by the way. Yeah? I just have to tweak out the response for the search <coughs> suggestion. The rest is, is a declaration. Yeah? So the extra work is producing this XML. So this is the difference between my UI5 application that I originally started with and anything to the search provider. And now I can go in my PSCG role yeah, that is used, let's say, for several PSCG roles that I want to uh, basically, I have users assigned to them, so I want to push my application to these users via these PSG roles. And here, in this special node, uh, you know, and search end, <coughs> I have all my search provider registered. You saw the Wikipedia one already uh, when I when I was in NWBC, when I was in NWBC, But you also have these products, yeah. And these products, you see, it's based on the same ICF node that I just sent. Yeah? And now, if I go to NWBC. I have, uh, for the, because everything is preset, so I have to hide some stuff in advance, so I had it here to begin with, but I, I just chose to hide it, so that's another feature that NWC provides. It allows you actually to fine-tune the search providers that you have, so you can rearrange them, you can push one of them higher than the other, and so on. And now I just go and enable it. <coughs> and if, if everything works fine, I should get my suggestions. Here they are. This is my EPM product search. Yeah, you see the HT. Somewhere here is the EMTS PDA, right? <laughs> there we go. And if I just hit enter, I'm going to get my search application. The UI5, right? So that's an easy way to deliver content to end users yeah? using two of the aspects, two, two of the key features of this add on. Yeah? The UI5 development toolkit and then the WC. But now comes a more interesting question. I mean, what happens when I click on one of these things? Yeah? What is the details page? Do I have to continue developing? Chances are I already have a product, uh, uh, I mean, a transaction that displays products, right? Uh, whether it's, uh, and actually, if you check EPM, you know, the referencing uh, application, you'll see that indeed you have such applications. And I think we saw it in your demo as well, right? This EPM. Uh, search the uh, details page, maybe now it's, it's completely, uh, it's completely uh, made, made up. Yeah, so you see, you spend some time doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Better if you just uh, like, come on, help me here. So, so many nights. <laughs> so 
it wouldn't be nicer if you just get it, you know, if you just somehow can link to it and to use it in this context of, uh, you know, in the context of, let's say, of this free spirit of casual usage and uh, HTML5. Of course you can, but it's not that easy, yeah, because chances are that if you attempted to do it with the knowledge that you have today, um, you'll probably end up uh, coding here a very ugly URL, right? Because the URL for a working pro up of screen, let's say, is several lines long, yeah? And chances are that it's unstable, chances are that it's shell dependent, and so on. And this is why we give you the navigation service, which allows you to easily um, derive, you know, or navigate to targets based on logical links, yeah? So in your application, you're going to be coding again logic against logical links, yeah? And the navigation service will return you the right link for the given shell. Yeah, the right URL for the given shell. And in our case, if I just click on it, you're going to see that, uh, that I'm actually rendering it. Uh, um, I'm rendering it in an iframe, but you can choose how, how you want to render it yeah, if you do it in a really smart way. And that's what I want to do, actually, show you how to do it in a smart way. So that not, you just, not that you just you know, have a linkage, yeah, that you just navigate. By the way, this is SAP GUI, yeah? So I can do some tricks here. Um, but you can do it in a way that uh, allows you to build uh, also high fidelity application based on these old technologies, right? Because if I click on the favorites and if I try to extract the real, real URL, you're going to see some interesting things about it. You're going to see that it's based on URL fragments. Yeah? So this, the first part of the fragment is the logical link, and then it's the parameter that help you figure out. The, the business parameters yeah, that help you get the instance of the, of the application. Yeah? In this case, the product ID. But the implication of using such uh, URL construct is that A, I create human readable URLs that are bookmarkable, that are integrated with the browser history. Has anyone tried to click the browser button when you're running a working pro application? Yeah? It simply <laughs> doesn't work. So this helps you address that. Yeah? I can share this URL with colleagues because actually, because I, I'll show you in a second. On top of this, there's a UI5 application setting. So I can actually send this URL to anyone, and then they can open it in their user agent of choice. So they do not have to have NWBC here. Yeah? So let's show you how to do that. So if I go now to my, uh, to my agent of choice, you know, I can just click the page button and hit enter. I'm not going to wait too long. It's here, yeah? And um, and now I can add it to my favorites. Uh, Mark this page, right? And uh, next time I come and hit my favorites, I'm going to see the screen, yeah? Which is uh, somehow, somehow suboptimal, but I'm still going to see that screen. And uh, I don't have to have NWC to, to render it. And because it's humanly readable, you can also quite easily code against it. I mean, come on, how complicated is it? And one application of this hashing here yeah, is that it's actually client-side rendering. So this allows you to build dynamic, uh, this allows you to uh, resolve the targets dynamically in the client without, you know, explicitly initiating a round trip. Basically, you can decide when you're going to initiate a round trip. This allows you to cache stuff on the client, right? So you don't have to send, you know, get the target every time or render this, uh, uh, wrap the whole screen every time. You can, you know. Uh, uh, add several iframes and switch between them based on how we navigate. So the decision of when you go and fetch uh, the, the screen is up to you, it's up to the client. And this, of course, helps you implement such, such cool things as flicker-free browsing, yeah? And choose the shell that's going to surround it and add content to it. So now my shell is very clean, yeah? I've added only this, but you can probably go crazy, yeah? With the stuff that you can add on top of it. You can add the gold reflection shell that we saw in your demo, yeah? From my else demo. Yeah, in everybody's demo, right? And I'm going to have a new, completely new uh, shell experience around it, which follows uh, the Opera rather than another type of standard. I'm actually going to show you the new high performance applications with the one screenshot, just so that you can see what you can achieve with the services, yeah? what kind of fidelity that promotes casual usage of products uh, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can build on top of this UI5 and this UI integration services. Um, and again, you don't need a default shell for it. And the way I did it is quite simple. Yeah? 
So in my code, I have this Go application. Yeah? So this is just an HTML. Again, very simple. I have one view here that I add. And in this view, yeah, I call this Launchpad service. Yeah? And I pass to the Launchpad service the URL <laughs> fragment that I received. Yeah? This, this guy here. I specify the shell type. In this case, I don't want I want it to work in any shell type, so I did not pass any default resolution here. And then the NAV service logs into something that's called Launchpad. It's, it's an application, it's a transaction from SAP. That's where I have it. I'm going to just type it. Now we're coming to the, to the conclusion, right? And in my application, actually, show you is that I have hard coded the launchpad instance that I'm using. So the launchpad actually allows you to group uh, navigation targets, the technical definition of navigation targets into launchpad instances. Yes, this is, so I have hard, 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 hard coded it for simplicity, but you can uh, do more elaborate things with it. So this is this is the instance that I'm using and did this oops no it's not good. The next one is the goal. And here I have this guy. It's a technical definition of a transaction, SCP MPD. Yeah, I did. I, you, you can't tell this from the hash product, right? What's behind it? It has advanced parameters, in which the most important is this one, application alias. This is the same as my hash value. Yeah, and I also, if you remember, I also had some uh, business parameters that they passed to it, which is ID, which is resolved by the by the launchpad uh, to this technical parameters which is passed to the transaction. So this is all happening behind the scene. Yeah? So based on this definition, the launchpad service will return you, let me show you what it's going to return you. going to return you this, and here you see the, the good old URL from the web GUI. Yeah? So, I mean, it doesn't look that pretty. Yeah? How, how more user-friendly is this compared to what I had, uh, what I had passed to my, to my other colleague yeah? to share and compare this with this? Yeah? It's much more usable, this URL. And it's stable, yeah? unlike that one. The other one can change. And just to show you how it can change, let's say tomorrow you install the latest version of uh, your, I mean the latest EHP, right, of your ECC. This EHP brings lots of things, among which is the so-called UI renovations. So some of your screens are going to be renovated. You can experience this with EPM. If you have the Netflix 731, your EPM model does not, I mean it also has this transaction, but it also has, for each of these transactions, has a renovated screen, so we've got the Pro for Plan Manager. And now the question is how you deliver these new screens. I mean, that's what the users would get if you don't do something about it. Yeah, but they already have the new screens, yeah, which looks much, much nicer, uh, as I'm going to show in a second. And because of this decoupling between the logical link yeah, and the technical link in the launch pad, you can do this with just one customizing. Yeah, so I go to, my, to the launch pad. I will, I mean, what I'm going to do for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to rename it. Right? So now nothing will happen if I use it. Yeah? No one is going to be able to find my product. It doesn't exist. Yeah? And I have to create another, um, of course, instance, navigation instance, which is to the Web Team Pro application that was shipped with the renovation. You see, it's actually a floor plan manager application. Again, I have to specify the parameters. Yeah, a big deal. It's easy. The business parameters are ID. ID and now I have to change <coughs> the logical alias to product because that's what I have called in my application. And product save. And now this great gal, yeah, which had uh, added these two favorites, yeah, she tries to open the favorites again with my magic work get the renovated screen. Yeah. 
here it comes. That's a different spinning wheel. First time. <laughs> Compiling. So now you, you can use it as, so this decoupling allowed you actually to quite easily, you know, uh, change applications and deliver them to your users. And just one side note, this is not a proof that SAP is going towards timeless software implementation, I don't know what it is, yeah? Just, to, you know, just to, by this decoupling could just renovate the UIs, you know, independently from the backend. Um, and all that, all that with this UI services. And now, if you just to prove, just to show you, because you know, I don't, because of your screen now, people don't believe me that there is a change, right? So mm -hmm. now, if I, so you know, um, actually, I had a nicer, a nicer picture here that you know, you can take this URL, you know, this humanly readable URL, and you can send it to a colleague of yours, right? This is what I missed to show you. Yeah, you should try to sell this 15-inch laptop to that customer, yeah, and you show them the link, and they can open it. Browser, and this is what was uh, this is what I actually showed you with the Firefox app that they, they can use the agent of their choice. But again, not only for those guys, the application has changed, but it also has changed to your uh, more expert users, let's say, that are using uh, the VPC. And it's easy to use the services. We provide three layers of the services. There, I mean, the APIs for the services exist in three different layers. They exist in ABAP. Yeah? So you can, I'll say why it is in ABAP in a second. They will dispose them also as web resources, as all data services. This is basically what I just showed you. You know, if you remember uh, in this uh, in the IE when I was testing it, was an all data service. They exist as web interfaces, as whole data, and they also exist as JavaScript APIs. Yeah? So you can easily code against them. And if you don't like any of these layers, yeah? so you, can, you can fall back to the next one. Yeah? So for example, if you're coding in Silverlight, not that you should be you, or I'm encouraging you to do that, yeah? you can use the old data stuff. Yeah? But then if you don't like the old data stuff because they don't quite fit into your scenario, yeah? maybe you want to add something, you want to tweak out the, out the outcome, yeah? you can go and fall back on your app APIs and on top of them create your service. So that's basically the idea behind these services and the BBC and of course your AI. And that's it for me. Mm -hmm. And the usual question, do you guys have questions? No. Just a question. Um, um, so what I, what I just did here, uh, we're planning to uh, so we're planning to write several blocks that will appear under this block by Philip that I showed in the beginning. I'm thinking how do we distribute the code? Hopefully, Rui is going to jump in and say use code exchange. <laughs> That's why I asked how about this whole data service, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, because you know if I can uh, if, if we're going to build it uh, with uh, you know the example with all data, it will be very nice if we can package it. In smooth on the process of distributing of the code and the logistics aspect of it with combined with the user experience from this uh, Eclipse plugin that we, we saw from the recording of, of, uh, of Gregor. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the plan down the road is also to merge hopefully with the demo kit from your file because at the end of the day, you know, if we, um, if we say that uh, the, the, this pleasure usage, yeah, this, uh, this HTML5 uh, ways of using it, you know, this client side uh, rendering uh, promotion that we do, uh, then of course you have to you know expose them as one consistent uh, JavaScript library and demo documentation. But for now you just have to use uh, the good old sub help. It's documented there. Mm -hmm. uh, not optimal, yeah, but we're going to improve. If 
if I understand well, so I can uh, create a project in Eclipse and then deploy it on the ABBA stack and the store on a BSP repository. This is the standard value proposition the from device. the HTML5 So, at the end, uh, since I, um, I see the deep link uh, for the URL uh, for quick access to the single product in the, pay, in, uh, in the web page, at the end, this application is considered, is can be, is considered as a stateful or stateless. What I just show was a stateless up to the point that I showed the web in Parabola screen. Then it, then it, then this is a stateful application. Basically. Yes. Right. Okay. In the running inside a stateless frame. Okay. Yeah. And so the plugin is stateless. Plugin. Um, the new well, is stateless. This part here, yeah, when I when I'm showing it here, right? I mean this part, this frame. I mean it's very thin, right? I could have put actually a gold reflection. Let just you know what? Let me just show you quickly a better example with this because. Um, because then you can fully appreciate it. Yeah? And I'm going to do some, how do you call it in the sales case? Upselling, yeah? Uh, upselling, promotion, yeah? Hidden advertisement, another line of products from SAP, the high performance application based on channels. <laughs> um, yeah, so if I do this, so this is, uh, so this is the HPA shell, right? So you see, this is, this is the UI5 control yeah. that runs, renders some content. And I mean, we did not pick the word for Ava, but they also have, you know, when, when you drill down in one of these graphics, yeah? When you drill down in one of the graphics, let's say you find a particular product, now you want to see the details when you click it, inside this shell it's going to render the web view for Ava app, yeah? And that way, of course, the web view for Ava app will be stateful, yeah? But the thing around will be stateless, in theory. In reality, both share the same state. Because we also have a way that's coming with the new shell API that we will release in the next version, officially to the public. We have a way to do session management between different applications. We can offer you also, you know, this is the enterprise quality that I'm talking about. This is one of the value propositions of these UI services. Yeah? That this is type of the things that are missing if you do pure UI5 development. Yeah? How you're going to register sessions? Yeah? How you share users, user identity across different applications? Yeah? That's the direction that we're going to go. But this is just an example of, I mean, that's more, how should I say, more, um, more, um, more easy to sell than mine, yeah? Um, of how you can benefit. And yes, around it, it's stateless, inside it's a state. And if I deploy a project without embedding uh, WebDIM Pro ABAP or other stateful uh, uh, inside application, I can deploy a stateless uh, um, uh, custom pages uh, done by myself. Where do you want to deploy them? Uh, but so what I show you, I've registered them in NWC here. Yeah, here NWC is very easy, by the way, because now the, the session is shared yeah, because we have a shell around it. So the session will pro propagate okay, to the table. Look at you asking for the until the table. You propose that the table of products. That's mm -hmm. pure okay. UI five. Yeah. Yeah. But the identity of the user is is in this case it's managed by the shell. Yeah. But if I start it on my own, yeah, let's say I receive an email with the link, yeah, I'm going to go directly to the next page, and of course I'll have to authenticate myself because there is it's, yes. it's hosted in ABAP, right? So I have to log in. If I have single sign-on installed, eh, it's going to happen uh, seamlessly, yeah. So hmm. you don't have you don't the user don't even have to see that there is an authentication going on there, right? But this is one of the I think that the value proposition of deploying UFI applications in ABAP, right? Because then you can more easily manage this type of aspect of authentication. Okay. Thank you. I hope I hope I got your question and I hope I answered. Yes. <laughs> and is is gateway prerequisite? Um, for the services, gateway is prerequisite because the one that I showed you is using all data. It's based on all data. But as I said, because it has three layers of API, so we can actually fall back on the ABAP one and you know, expose it with a simple ICF node in a REST service, yeah? in a B BSP application. Yeah? Uh, we're currently in talk with the gateway colleagues, and the theory, don't hold me on that, shall I turn off the recording? The theory is that if you have the add-on, and if you're an existing user, yeah, then the gateway is also free. Mm -hmm. If you're an ECC, if you have ECC, yeah, and you get the add-on, the gateway, it's not, you don't have to pay for the gateway. At least this is, I don't know, I have to prove it, we have to check it. 
I wasn't paying attention, sorry. You're not paying attention, of course you're not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, have to pay, you have to pay for a gateway if, you, if you're an ECC, existing ECC user? Um, there are discussions going on about the Re removing that the, the payment or not payment of gateway services. You have to pay for, yeah. for, for the user, not for the gateway yeah. service. Ah. Because gateway is also delivered in a solution and it's also free. Maybe it's better to wait until... Let's wait a bit, yeah? yeah. But, yeah. But, 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 but please make your comments on this block here because then we can take them and answer them after I check with the, okay. with the other colleagues from SMB. Yeah. The block is under Filip Mizovsky. I think I even saw it uh, appearing uh, somewhere. Development uh, center page, it was, it was, yeah, it was appearing there at some point. So, yeah. Philip, that's introducing the new UI add ons for SAP that you Maybe I can send it to you and you can put it to Sapna. Yes, for the yes, for sure. Yeah. And then you can, John, John oh, Moore yeah. already, has already done some comments about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and other people, you two have done comments, many people. So it's, it's, it, is, it is a new product and of course chances are there are many things that we did not do right. Which is, I prefer it, to, you know, uh, I don't see a way to, this is a very complex topic that we're trying to build here. I don't see an easy way of tackling them in one shot. So one by one, service by service, quarter by quarter, adding more and more and listening. Listen to the, hmm? and listening to the <laughs> Reading from SDM. Good time. But we should pull, make it. Uh, call it the day. At least one call hour. Call it the morning. Yeah. The next session is lunch. Yeah. My favorite session. Yeah. We are